Hey, I'm Diana. I'm a homeschooling mom of three. And today this video is gonna be all about how I plan out my homeschool schedule. This is actually a video that's part of a series where I'm trying to help new homeschooling parents navigate all the unknown that comes with starting homeschooling for the first time. I've been there. I know how difficult it can be. And so my hope is that with these videos, I can help you on your journey to homeschooling. So if you haven't watched it already, I would suggest you pause this video right now and go over to my other video called Homeschool for Beginners. In that video, I talk all about everything you need, to, you need to do if you are just starting out. Now, if that isn't you and you've been homeschooling a while, maybe you're in a little bit of a rut, maybe you're looking for a new routine or a new schedule, then let's keep going with this video. But if you are brand new to homeschooling and you really don't know where to start, definitely go back to the Homeschooler for Beginners video and then come back here when you're done. This video is gonna talk all about how I plan out our homeschool. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how I look at the year as a whole, the week and the day, and kind of how I put together our homeschool lessons. And I'm gonna give you an idea of a general flow of our homeschool day as well. I know for me, it's really helpful to hear what works for other families, also what doesn't work for other families. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that what works for me is gonna work for you, I know that, but at least it can give you a little insight into what I find is successful or what just doesn't work for our family dynamic. And maybe you might learn something in this video that you can incorporate into your daily routine. First, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the difference between schedule and routine. Um, for us, we're pretty relaxed in our homeschool day, and so when I first started homeschooling, I felt that it had to look like this strict schedule, that we had to wake up at a certain time, that we had to do things by a certain time, and that just didn't work for us. Um, for those of you who are new here, I have three girls, a second grader, a first grader, and a kindergartner, and especially when we started, when my oldest was in kindergarten, it was chaotic and there were some times we wouldn't start homeschool until the afternoon, sometimes we'd be at 6.30 in the morning. And so for me, implementing a routine was a lot easier and it helped with my the way I looked at the success of our day as well. Um, if I wasn't able to get a task done by the time that I had set, I felt a lot of disappointment. So what by implementing a routine versus a schedule, it helped me create a more flexible day in regards to our homeschool. So just keep that in mind. You might be the type who loves structure and your kids might thrive on structure. So if that works for you, that's amazing. And what I'm gonna share today, you will also be able to use and implement because a lot of things do hold some structure. Um, but you will hear me talk a lot about routine and that's the big difference that I'm referring to. The fact that we have a basic plan to our day versus a schedule and for things to happen at certain times of the day. The first thing I do is I like to set goals for the year. Um, I look at our curriculum and I see how many lessons that we need to complete to have the curriculum finished by the end of the year or the date I would like to have us finished by. Um, and then in regards to our other subjects that are a little bit more flexible, such as history or geography or science, uh, I set a goal um, in regards to how much I wanna get done. So for science, we work in unit studies and I'll pick, okay, I would like to get four units done by the end of the year. And that just helps me when I'm planning out our weeks. It gives me an idea of how it should flow. But again, there is flexibility there because there are some months that we're really on task and getting a lot done, and there are some months that are a little slower and things and concepts that are a little bit more difficult that we might need to move through slower. And that's the beauty of homeschool, is that you get to create that schedule that works for you and your family. In regards to yearly planning, I don't go too much into it. Um, for me, it can get a little bit intimidating to think of this big picture on all this work we have to do. So I'm looking at it from a really simple perspective. What would I like to get done? In a perfect world, what would be the best case scenario? It would be finishing all of our curriculums, getting four unit studies done. What would be ideal? Um, 
and I just kind of write those goals down, like I said, to help me gauge how much work we need to get done throughout the year. Basically from there, I don't really plan out our months. Again, looking at the big picture and the big um, and the large amount of work that needs to get done in a month, especially for three girls, um, can be super intimidating. So for me, it's easier to plan out my week. And that also provides us flexibility as well because we were, let's say, able to move really quickly through our curriculum one week, then planning the next week, I can just pick up where we left off versus having to adjust an entire month of planning. It is less overwhelming for me and I notice I don't get as disappointed if we don't meet certain goals or if we move too quickly. Well, for our curriculum, um, a lot of it is already planned out. We use the good and the beautiful, which we absolutely love. And what I love about that curriculum, it is very open and go. So we are able to just open our books and pick up where we left off. Um, but in regards to the other subjects like science or history or geography, I do a lot of planning and I enjoy that. You don't have to do that, but it's something that I really enjoy. So I use these planning sheets. And basically, what I do is I will put the subject up here and then what lessons I would like to complete for the week. This is a weekly planning sheet. Any supplies that I need to pick up for our lessons, um, any field trips that we would like to take, you know, if we're learning about space, we went to the Space Center, or if we're doing a botany study and we want to go and garden, those are the type of things that I will write here in this section. And then also, for my girls, I love to do little fun snacks. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love to do themed snacks that go along with our lessons. Yes, I know I'm extra like that. You don't have to do that to be a good homeschooling parent, but I like it, so I do it. And that's where I write this part um, so I can keep track of what I plan to do for the week. So this is my weekly planning sheet. This next sheet is our weekly schedule for the girls. So this, each of the girls have one. You can see it says that you put the week in there and then the student's name. And these blocks up here are for the subjects. So what you would do is you would put math and then you um, would list out what lessons you would like to complete. I really love this, this sheet and how it works. I've used a lot of different um, schedules and techniques for planning, but what I really like about this is it gives the girls a little bit of independence. And so they are able to look at their sheet because they each have one and say, okay, I'm on lesson 53 and then they can open up their book and get to lesson to 53. And it gives them an idea of what to expect. And I think the fact that they have that control teaches them responsibility, accountability. Um, and so this is really working well for us. And then we'll put the electives here. There's also a spot for notes. So in there, I'll also put any supplies that we may, may need, um, anything else, any extra books that we wanna read that could go along with our lessons, that all goes in the, neck, in the notes portion. Our weekly planning sheet is definitely what we use the most. Um, it's what the girls use to reference what lesson they're on. It helps us stay on track for our goals. Uh, but I definitely, after implementing that, I found that I needed something a little bit more um, in regards to what the girls were gonna complete each day. So generally for my girls, for my kindergartner, she works anywhere from 45 minutes to one hour a day on her lessons. Um, and that's solely because I can work with her independently and really focus on her needs and her lessons. And so we can be really efficient with, uh, with it. I've used a lot of different techniques before, but this one after trying this for a little while works best. And so this is our daily time block schedule. And what it is, it, it's, a very simple, like you could see, you don't even need this worksheet to do this. You could write it just on a plain piece of paper. And so what I write out is what we would like to complete that day. Um, and we use the weekly sheet that I showed you previously to kind of figure out what we're going to put in here. But this is a little bit more specific because what we're going to do is we're not going to put a time like 9.30 or anything like that. We're going to put the amount of time we want to work on that particular subject. So for example, we'll write math and then we'll say 
10 minutes or 15 minutes and then we'll move on and I'll even detail different things like her snack time or her outside time all of those things on here um, and this gives her a lot of structure so earlier in the video I talked about the fact that how a schedule didn't really work for us because we felt that if we fell off the wagon at any point or missed a certain time slot that we were playing catch up the entire day um, this helps us because we can be a little bit more flexible in regards to what time we start and what time we finish finish we're just working in time blocks so here you would put 10 minutes 15 minutes and then once this task is complete then we can check it off and move to the next let's say something happens that you didn't expect it doesn't really matter because you can just go on to the next time block whenever you're ready it could be right after math or it could be at the whenever you have the opportunity to move on to that particular time block and so what I'll do is I'll take that 45 minutes of or an hour of work and I will put it into time blocks with checklists and so I'll write math or language arts or um, I'll even put snack time in there and I'll write science project and I'll assign everything a time and then it will just move through the time blocks. And I actually even use this in regards to my work. This helps me stay really on task and there's something super satisfying about finishing that time block and checking it off the list. But this is a really, really great way to keep them on task and I think it's helpful too because if let's say we're working on math and maybe they're not as motivated, you know, they know, oh, I only have to do this for 15 minutes. Or I'll say, oh, you only have four minutes of math left, let's finish up. Um, and then at that point, we just stop where, wherever we left off. So it might be one lesson, it might be two lessons, it might be half a lesson. For us, it's just about what she's capable of doing in that amount of time. That's what's most important to us. So there you have it. There is a basic outline of how I schedule and plan out our homeschool day. I hope this really was helpful for you. If you are interested in any of these worksheets, they are all part of my ebook. Um, it's the Homeschool Beginner's Guide. It's a 35 page resource guide for new homeschooling parents. My intention with creating this book was to help the new homeschooling parent who wasn't sure how to get started with homeschooling. I answer a lot of frequently asked questions about homeschooling in general. How much does it cost? How do you homeschool more than one child? When should you start? All of those things are in this guide and my hope is that this can be a blessing for you in your homeschooling journey. So all the details are going to be in the description below so check that out um, i do have a special discount code for my youtube subscribers so be sure to subscribe to my channel and then check the description for that discount code thank you so much for watching this video um, if you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments let me know what questions you have and if there are any other videos that i could make that'd be helpful for you um, and stay tuned for the next video coming soon